You're listening to episode number 306 of the Amplify Your Awesome podcast. Today, we're going to hear the full length story from Elena Ledoux, who has gone from corporate litigator to multi award winning serial entrepreneur. She's going to unpack how she runs her everyday being a a serial entrepreneur because, you know, running one business is a lot to do. When you run multiple businesses, there have to be some systems and ways to be the most productive that you can. And she literally is going to share with us her way to get everything done during the day. I cannot wait to hear what you think. Have you ever felt like there was something missing in your business? Something holding you back from the success you're seeking? If so, you are not alone. For nearly 20 years, that's exactly how I felt as a business owner. It wasn't until I discovered human design that it all became clear. And it turns out that I was the missing piece in my own business. Join me on this journey of discovering the real me and hear stories from other business owners building businesses around all of their awesomeness. I'm Young Pratt, and it's time, my friend, to amplify your awesome. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Amplify Your Awesome podcast. Our guest today is no stranger to creating businesses. She is the founder of several businesses, including Superb Maids, Mommy Go. She is a business coach and runs Boss Security Screens. Our guest today is Elena Ledoux, and this is actually her second time on the podcast. Elena, welcome back to the show. I am so happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me again. I was just saying before this interview started that whenever I see your things pop up into my news feed on, on Facebook in particular, I'm just amazed because you managed to get so much stuff done. And it, it's really quite extraordinary what you do in life and all the things you've created. I want you to take us back to before you were a business owner, what did life look like and how did you start on this road into entrepreneurship? Um, So I'm an immigrant. I grew up in Soviet Union and I moved to U.S. 20 years ago and I went to law school. So my initial first half of my journey in U.S. was um, law, you know, studying to be a lawyer, then being a lawyer, clerking for judges, then doing litigation. That's basically my life. I love law. I still do. Um, So that's what I did. And then um, after I had my second son, I went um, on sabbatical for a couple of years and we lived in Europe uh, with two kids, my husband, and we brought my parents. We brought one of our um, kids' best friends. So um, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was really uh, rewarding for me to be a mom, but eventually I became bored. So when we came back to US, we actually um, ended up, I wasn't sure what I'm going to do, but my coincidentally, my best childhood friend, Nargi, she uh, won Green Card Lottery, which gave her and her family a chance to come to US and build their life. And um, when they came out, we basically started a cleaning company and just kind of exploded. We won all these awards and have all these employees and I just kind of got sucked into the business world and I'm very happy here. I I, I feel like I belong. Such a great story because I think for so many people, entrepreneurship is not something that was planned. It was something that was kind of thrown at them or they fell into. So I love that you're such a good example of it wasn't what you thought you were going to do. You thought you were going to do law. Then, you know, you had your second child, things shifted, you were looking for something. And then this business opportunity came along. And like you said, you have won awards, like top top 10 in the country, I think you told me before with your cleaning company. So, I mean, it really has exploded. And I know from there, you've branched out to do all sorts of different businesses. And I want to talk about something that you told me when I first met you a couple years ago about being able to do it all. Because I know sometimes as moms, as women, as business owners, it feels like we have to do it all. Yet sometimes there's not enough energy to do it all. So Elena, how do you do it all? So I have this um, kind of, you know, uh, two things that contribute to my um, ability to survive a lot of things. And one is my natural laziness. I really don't like working too hard or suffering. So I try to create some sort of system to assist my survival. 
And uh, so that's number one. And the second factor is um, I do, um, you know, I worked in law for many years, over a decade, and it requires you to be highly systemized and organized and handle multiple cases. I had like several hundred cases. And law is the kind of area where there's zero margin for error. So you have to keep on top of your cases unless, you know, or else your, cl your clients will suffer and the firm will suffer. So, so one of the things that, um, I, the, the key thing that I came up with based on my legal experience is basically I had that big yellow legal pad, you know, the lined one. And every morning I will write down all of my key tasks that I have to accomplish right by the end of the day something that I absolutely cannot drop and sometimes they'll have 16 to 20 to 25 items and now by the end of the day I would actually cross all of them out so it allowed it to be highly highly productive I was the top building attorney in my firm and um, I love being on top of you know how some, some things like sometimes you get busy and things get overwhelming and then you don't enjoy whatever you're doing but if you stay on top of it and you're accomplishing things you, you're slaying it you're creating your world and you love it and that's the kind of experience I had with law so you know fast forward me being an entrepreneur at some point I started feeling kind of overwhelmed there's a lot of issues and things and you know, there's people we're in people people's business so we have to take care of a lot of little things and big things so and they get drowned out by you know like th there's important thing I would say there's important things and there's urgent things right and typically we take care of urgent things because they pull us uh, by our sleeve and then we take care we like jump in and take care of that and we do it at the expense of important things so I started thinking about how do I survive this and how do I actually manage to not let anything drop so I went back to writing stuff on the sheet and crossing them out and I started doing it on the sheet and it didn't work for me because in business, unlike in law, you're not stationary. So in, in law, you basically sit in your desk for the most part the entire day. And then when you go court appearance or some deposition or something, you leave the office, maybe go to the you know, next door conference room and then you come back again to your desk. So it's pretty easy to stay on top of your list. Whereas in business, you hop into the car, you drive, you go to the client's home, you go to a meeting, you come back. So basically, you never see your list, right? Um, so nothing gets done. Uh, I tried different organizers, online apps, um, like different phone apps. I'm a geeky person, so I've tried all the apps out there, <laughs> you name it. And um, I also bought really expensive and really highly rated um, daily planners because I love, you know, making my plans and, you know, like I would draw like little flowers. I do color code them and stuff, but nothing worked until I basically started using index cards. So, and now I swear by them, the index cards, the beauty of them is like uh, basically that they're really small, cheap and portable, right? So the index cards, uh, I buy like a bulk of them somewhere in Walmart. You can buy like 2000 of them for like $1. <laughs> Something ridiculous like they can find on Amazon, right? Just online, I like thick stuff, but any, anything will do basically. And it serves the same purpose. Every morning uh, I sit down and have my matcha and I basically sit down quietly for 10 minutes and I outline everything that's important that I need to accomplish by the end of today. And it could be anywhere from like five items to 25 items, right? And typically with like, I have like 10 to 15 items on my list, that's normal. And that includes not only work-related stuff, but health-related, family-related, friends-related. So like lunch with my mom or like buying something for my kids or, or anything like that would be also on the list. Even dating my husband, right? it's going to be on the list. So because we don't want it to be one-sided and only, you know, accomplish things in one area of our life, right? So we want to be well-rounded and happy and healthy. So uh, as I go throughout the day, as I hop in the car or go anywhere, I keep that list in front of me. I almost imagine like I'm a donkey and the list is a carrot. It has to stay in front <laughs> of my face at all times, right? And then whenever, inevitably, I get distracted by, you know, people, things, items, um, tasks, news, my own attention, you know, um, problems, I always go back to the list because it's right in front of me. I travel a lot, especially before pandemic. Um, and so I would bring the list with me on the airplane. I would bring it with me in the car, I put it like on the dashboard, right? So it was always in front of my face. 
And uh, the only time I don't use this method is when I decide consciously in the morning, I don't want anything accomplished today. It's my day off. But mm. all the other days I use it. And it works like a charm. So there's two things I really love about this story. The first is that you went seeking for an answer and you couldn't find one, so you made your own. And the second, that this is something that anyone listening could start doing today. So if you're out there listening and you're thinking, oh, this planner didn't work for me or this app didn't work for me, and there's not quite something that fit you yet, you know, give this a try. See how it works. I love the idea of the note cards. Now, Alina, when you are done with a note card, you've accomplished that task. What do you do with it? I, I just cross it off and I try to cross off everything uh, by the end of the day. And if there are any items pending, I would basically transfer them. Because sometimes, you know, we have these lingering thoughts by the end of the day, like, oh, shit, you know, I forgot to do this. <laughs> uh, and so, and then we can sleep or relax, right? Because we start thinking about it. So, what I do is I basically just transfer anything that's lingering in my mind, any remaining items, I just transfer them to the next day's card. So I can, can get kind of like a head start and that allows me to relax and enjoy because I know it's not going to get dropped. I'll take care of it tomorrow. Ooh, I love that. So it all goes on a singular note card every day then. Correct. Yes. And then I okay. just drop it. Done. Perfect. I think I'd be tearing that thing up or ripping it up or celebrating, make some confetti of my yes. own, saying, yes, I got it done. <laughs> Very satisfying to, to cross things off. Yeah, I love that. I talk to, I've talked to a couple other people who, you know, they've gotten rid of their to-do list. Some people have like this list, but this is a list that it's not always getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It literally is one each day. So you get to start the day with a, a clean slate. And like you said, there may be some things that transfer from one list to another, day after day or maybe from one day to the next but then it's done you, you finished it you, and you can move on so what an amazing tool thank you for sharing that sure i i told it to a lot of people and the one the ones who actually started using it they swear by it too they're like i can't believe how much stuff i accomplished and that, that would be typically mothers with like three kids right uh, with businesses and, and that still works on them so i definitely encourage you all to try it yeah, absolutely. And the fact that you said that it's not just business related things, because I know sometimes it's easy to get in that trap of thinking, I have to do this and this and this. And meanwhile, your, your kids are waiting for dinner and, you know, everyone's wondering where you are. So I love that you put all of the things, you balance out your life, your health, your kids, your family, your relationships, your work, and have all of the different facets of our lives on that card. Because I think that's probably why you are so successful too because you're balancing things you can you can see physically that oh i need to include some family time today or some time for me so i love that well my family demanded it they said like can we be added to your calendar please <laughs> so oh. after, after had that conversation i included them and then i started including my health as well so because i realized it's also important Yes. No. And, and I love that they demanded it because sometimes, you know, family members don't always know how to ask for that. So the fact that they just demanded and said, we want some time to, we want to be on your list. How yes. cool is that? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're good. And my husband is an entrepreneur as well. So he, it wasn't done like with any bitterness or anything like that. It's more like he understands because he's done the same thing, been there, done that. Right. So he just told me in the nicest possible way. And <laughs> To the list. <laughs> Amazing. Does he also keep his own list every day? He does. Yeah. He um, he doesn't. He does use index cards as well. And we use it on our kids. We we use it on ourselves, on each other. So we definitely. Um, he doesn't use it as religiously as I do, um, but he also has really good memory, unlike me. You know, in, ter in terms of short term memory, at least. Like, so he remembers <laughs> better than I do. I don't. I wipe everything clean. The minute I don't look at the card, I just. Don't <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. My kids always say, mom, I told you that already. It's like, well, did you write it down or did you put it on my calendar? Well, no. Well, no, it's our survival mechanism because yeah. we do hold everything in our head. The head will explode, right? 
So. <laughs> totally true. So I'm, I'm going to let them know also that you experience this as well, because they'll, yeah, they'll remind me. They think maybe I have, yeah, short-term memory loss or something, or they just give me a hard time about it because there's just so much going on. And now, you know, they have school from home right now. So we're all trying to balance our schedules and do these things. And they'll say something in passing, thinking I'm going to remember it four hours later, and I just don't. And part of me feels bad, but like you said, you know, we cannot physically hold on to all these things all day long so just let them go and if they're important write them down if you think about it, nowadays our phones are almost like our extension of our memory right we don't remember phone numbers uh, of our family you know except maybe like one or two numbers we don't remember certain things because we uh, we don't have to remember directions because we have gps so it's kind of like our memories are much more expanded now but um, in terms of our actual memory, it's, it's not the bestest, but that's okay. We have to keep up. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, technology definitely plays a, a big role too. So I love that. So Alina, when you're thinking about creating something new for one of your businesses and you sit down to make a plan to create content, something people can enjoy, whether it's online or off, how do you start that process? Well, uh, yeah, it starts again on my index card um, when I see it as an item. So I know I need to get it done. So I, I'm sitting down and I just work on that just one item. And I typically take into consideration, I, I always look at it like no, I'm not creating anything for myself. It's typically for something or someone, right? So I, I try to put that person, I, I try to put myself in that person's shoes and be like, what would that person need? Like, what would my employees need, for example, to make their life easier, to make this process easier? What's the aggravation there, right? So, for example, I'll give you a good example. For my maid service, we have a ton of employees, and, you know, we hire a lot, right? So we onboard a lot of people, and we have HR manager, and uh, he's great at kind of processing things, but he's not great at creating systems. And I, I sort of view it as my job anyways. So I've been throwing things at him, like, here are the forms you can use in this case. Here's this thing, like, and a lot of times the forms were about the benefits. So people are interested in benefits because we have a really comprehensive benefits package. Um, and then he would, you know, ask me, like, what about this? What about that? And my partner would ask me. So finally, I said, okay, so this is, again, my laziness. I'm too lazy to keep doing this. And second is, it is difficult for them if everything is scattered like that. So I just went on my website, uh, added a page called Benefits, and it's connected to Employee Portal, so they can see it. Um, and I just summarized everything about the benefits that I need them to know, that they would want to know. Like, who are, how do you enroll into benefits process? What's the eligibility? What benefits are we offering? I even printed out um, and inserted like the cost of different plans and prescription coverage and all this other stuff that they want to know, right? But for them, normally the way it would happen, they would ask HR manager, HR manager will ask my partner, my partner will ask me, I'll reach out to our health insurance broker and talk to them. And it's just going to go on and on. But now it's right all out there and all that noise died. So now I'm no longer bothered by all these inquiries and my HR manager is not suffering and my employees are happy because they know exactly what benefits we offer and they can help themselves. That's a really great example and I have to giggle every time you call yourself lazy because I call myself lazy all the time. I always say that I'm a lazy entrepreneur because like you, I want to be efficient. I want to get things done. I want them off my plate so I can just do the next thing. So having these systems and, and Thinking about that end result, who needs to hear this, what, you know, what issues are they having, what challenges, you know, where do they need support, thinking about that end result first before we start to create anything is such a great way to really think about content creation, whether it's for your employees or whether it's for your consumers, whoever it's for, just thinking about them and what they need and seeing what they need through their eyes and not our own, I think is such a huge takeaway from this example you've given us. Yes, because I feel like when, once we create, it is our job to create systems, but if we create system that nobody uses, I never go off and start yelling at my employees or my team members or whomever that they're not using it or my customers. 
uh, what what it means is my system sucks, so I need to redo it. Right? So <laughs> it's really about making their life easier. So as you know, if the system is great, people will grab it before it's even like completed and start using it and just carry it off, right? So I, I like seeing that, and if I see that they don't use something, then I just throw it in the trash can and start again. Mm. And that's a good lesson too, because sometimes I know we we as business owners, as parents even, sometimes we get so attached to a certain outcome or a certain way of doing things that when it's not done that way, I know sometimes I can take offense thinking, oh, but it was so awesome. The system was great. But like you said, if they're not using the system, there is something wrong with the system. There was a flaw in the design. We just need to start over again. Correct. Yep. <laughs> Elena, I want to make sure that everyone who is listening to this interview can reach out to you because you have so much valuable information to offer. I know you just started a brand new YouTube channel and that is going great. Where is the best place for people to connect with you? Probably a YouTube channel. Um, I get a lot of inquiries through Facebook, but I'm, uh, I believe I'm at the friend, uh, 5,000 friend limit. Hmm. So I can't add any more people. You can follow me on Facebook, but a lot of times people will reach out to me through Facebook and ask me a question. It's typically a business-related question. And uh, if it's the same question I've heard before or likely to be asked again, I usually just record a very detailed um, YouTube video explaining my process or the answer. If something that I feel like would be beneficial uh, for a lot of like a lot of different business owners, right? I just record it and I put it out there. So my YouTube channel is basically my first and last name, just Elena Ledoux, and it's, you know, it's been growing. People are watching it. I always get positive comments. You can go watch the videos and ask me the questions. Uh, ah, in the so good. And I have to say, it's super smart that when you get repeated questions, you just make a video because lots of people want to know about it. So there are probably more who are not asking the question. So the fact that you're just, you're just going in there and literally you're crossing it off your to-do list or your list of videos to make because people are asking you the questions, you're answering it, you're serving them, you're helping them accomplish what they need to accomplish by creating something with them in mind. So I appreciate you doing that. And I will make sure that I put all of your links to your YouTube channel and where they can and kind of follow you on Facebook, even though they can't request you as a friend, they can still go check out all the things you're doing. Because I know with many, with all your businesses, there's always something to learn from you. And you can probably talk about all different sorts of business and never run out of topics on any given day. Yes, I've done, I've made a lot of mistakes <laughs> since I am. <laughs> so so uh, I write some of the personal stuff, like kind of a lot of life lessons. I write in Quora. I have uh, over 75 million views on my writing. I'm wow. one of the top worldwide. And you can, if, you, if you're interested, and they're all subdivided by topics. So you can go in Quora, find me, and read my answers to people's questions. They want ask me a question. Um, and then for something like business-related, especially service business-related, then it's YouTube. Amazing. Elena, thank you so, so much. I'm glad at the beginning of this call, before we started, we were reminding each other that we had a memory pop up. We were together a couple of years ago and it was such a fun time. So what a great day to, to do this interview and to celebrate our two-year friendship now. And you're out there in the world doing amazing things. I want to thank you for everything you do. Thank you for sharing your mistakes and making it easy for those people who are following in your footsteps. Thank you. You're amazing. And it was um, so fun to hang out with you. In, in Atlanta. So can't wait for us to reunite after the, the end of the world is over. So. Oh my goodness. Me too. We'll have to bring our capes and our, and our masks, right? Sure. Yes. <laughs> we can recreate. And if you're curious to see us in our capes and masks, you can go to my Facebook page, which will be on today's show notes. Go check out our, our pictures because we had so much fun together. Again, Elena, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. So what was your biggest takeaway from Elena? I want to know, come on over, join the conversation at youngpratt.com slash 306. Let me know your biggest takeaway. And you can also find all the ways to connect with Elena directly on that page. Now on the next episode, you're going to hear from Lisa Zerontny, who has gone from caregiver to productivity and stress management coach. So if those ideas of productivity, stress management, if those are things you want to get more help with or you want to learn more about, definitely stick around, subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss her episode next week. Until then, I wish you an amazing day. Now go out there and amplify your awesome. 
Thanks for tuning in to the Amplify Your Awesome podcast. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any tips, tricks, or secrets on building a business based around your awesome. Hey, and while you're there, leave us a rating and review. Let us know what you think of the show. And until next time, my friends, go out there today and amplify your awesome.